The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant used an endoscopic probe in the containment vessel of the number three reactor. Workers with Tokyo Electric Power Company inserted cameras and measuring instruments down a pipe leading inside the vessel. The workers found radiation levels as high as one sievert per hour. The levels were lower than in the containers of the number one and two reactors. They also confirmed that the vessel was filled with about 6.4 meters of water. TEPCO officials suspect that most of the nuclear fuel in the number three reactor melted through the core and fell into the containment vessel. But workers were not able to see the bottom because of what appeared to be accumulated dust in the water was blocking their view. Just think funny things. When Carl Chappell's children were frolicking in the cold water creek beds of St. Louis, Missouri, decades ago, he had no clue his kids were literally playing in poison. The time they were doing that, most of that contaminated material that was in there was up top. It would be decades before Carl and thousands of other families discovered that the 15-mile creek was flowing with lethal radioactive material. My son was diagnosed with appendix cancer in 2011, and that basically was the time that we started really putting everything together. Stories courageously shared by families on Facebook led the community to begin investigating. People started getting diagnosed with cancer before 40, and these were very active people, very healthy, um, very healthy people. It just didn't make sense. It all goes back to World War II when America tested its first nuclear weapons, otherwise known as the Manhattan Project. Radioactive waste was later on dumped near the creek, contaminating nearby farmland. 18 months ago, Mary Osco was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. She's never smoked a cigarette in her life. This was part of national defense. The Manhattan Project was to, to um, get the atomic bomb so that we could go over and, you know, win the war and, and uh, defeat Japan and, and take out these cities. But we're still victims. We're still casualties of World War II. Nearly 2,000 cancer cases have been reported in neighborhoods around the creek. Among them, Angela Hebling's mother, who died of brain cancer at age 39. Her father has stage four throat cancer. And Angela herself has been deemed a medical anomaly by doctors. Um, I was diagnosed with pleomorphic adenoma. It's a, it's a tumor that's in your parotid gland. From my own research, I've discovered that that tumor is commonly seen in Hiroshima bomb victim survivors. In June, the Army Corps of Engineers announced that it found more radioactive soil in various areas, including this public park. Our main goal is to make sure that we can protect human health and the environment. And what we're dealing with is generally a low-level contamination, but it does pose a long-term threat, and that's what we stay focused on. So right now, if you walked over a spot that has contamination, chances are it's six inches to several feet underneath clean soil. For Carl Chappell's family, that long-term threat is very real. His father died of cancer at age 48, and just a few months ago, his son suffered the same fate at 44 years old. He did pretty well the first couple of years, but it was in, in uh, March of 2014 is when he really had gotten uh, sick and then it was beyond anything that they could really do for him. Uh, and then he passed away 86 days ago. The Army Corps of Engineers has spent 17 years excavating and cleaning up the poisons of Cold Water Creek. Yet so far, the U.S. government has done nothing to study the health consequences that this disaster has had on countless families. Marina Pornaya, RT, St. Louis, Missouri. Marina joins us now live to elaborate on the story. First of all, Marina, Really powerful reporting there. Thank you so much for, you. for heading there. Um, but Marina, victims exposed to radioactive material in St. Louis have been dubbed the poison children of Coldwater Creek. What type of illnesses in this small area are we seeing that make it a cancer cluster? 
Well, Anya, we are seeing such a concentration of cancers in a small area that it's absolutely mind-boggling. Now, keep in mind that approximately 300,000 people live in northern St. Louis. For that population, experts say one to three cases of appendix cancer would be normal. Northern St. Louis has 45 cases of appendix wow. cancer. Take a look at the numbers that we, uh, we have. According to a self-reported health survey conducted by a Northwestern University, University professor, there is at least 184 cases of brain cancer, over 300 cases of thyroid cancer or disease, 53 cases of lupus, nearly 450 cases of autoimmune disease. The list goes on and on. Now, this survey that I'm, I'm citing doesn't even mention all the cases of colon cancer, non-smoking lung cancer, as well as, as the birth defects that have been reported. Now, most of these stories have been reported on a Facebook page, which now has more more than 11,000 followers. Now, we, we should also mention that Northern St. Louis is a middle-class neighborhood where people are educated about healthy lifestyle. This isn't a community where everyone is eating fast food every day and drinking beer for breakfast. It would be very hard to blame this cancer cluster on poor lifestyle choices. And those people that I spoke with believe that their illnesses and the illnesses of their friends or their relatives are directly linked to the nuclear waste and radioactive exposure that contaminated Cold Water Creek for decades. Well, those numbers are quite damning, uh, but during your time in St. Louis, you also learned that these individuals exposed to the radioactive material are facing medical barriers. How so? That's right. Residents I interviewed say one of the major problems is that doctors in St. Louis aren't typically expecting cancers from people who are in their 20s or their 30s or their early 40s. So when a 35-year-old patient, for example, goes to his or her doctor complaining of being tired or feeling some kind of abnormal muscle pain, physicians don't immediately test for cancers. Moreover, there's been cases of insurance companies refusing to pay for people who uh, in their 30s who want to pre-screen for something like colon cancer because insurance companies say that's too young, uh, that, that age is too young to test for that type of cancer. However, uh, tens of thousands of people that have grown up around radioactive waste believe that 35, year old is, uh, 35 years old is not too young to test for colon cancer. So there's no official state or federal system that is set up in St. Louis for early health awareness so the medical community can guide people that are coming to their doctors at such a young age uh, and being ultimately eventually diagnosed with cancer. Well, Marina, St. Louis was, of course, the birthplace of the U.S. atomic bomb. Is there anything the U.S. government could do, according to people that you talk to, to compensate or even bring justice to the victims and families of those who were exposed to these radioactive materials for decades? There is. If the federal government gives what's called downwinder status to St. Louis, doctors and insurance companies will be instructed to give special consideration to people exposed to radioactive material. Downwinder status is a special program that was set up by the Department of Justice to compensate or assist innocent victims of World War II testing at, uh, and those that were around nuclear material. Now, other cities in the United States have received that status. St. Louis has not, and that's one of many things that the community is fighting for. RT correspondent Marina Portnaya, thank you so much for breaking all of that down. Take you back to our two big stories of the morning developing in Nye County. Emergency officials are in Beatty after a fire broke out at a radioactive and hazardous waste processing plant. This all happened as the area is dealing with the lingering effects of the weekend weather. Yeah, double whammo out there. 8 News Now reporter Michael Stevens has been live out there with the latest. What's going on, Michael? Petrania, Brian, good morning to you. NHP is blocking off the northbound area of 95. You can even see a semi right now that they're speaking with a semi driver telling them that this area 17 miles of 95 is blocked off because of yesterday's storms now anyone coming north just like this semi is being detoured many of the people are even parked off to the side waiting for this route to reopen meantime again as you mentioned this is not the only thing emergency crews are dealing with at this hour about 45 miles to our north near the town of Beatty emergency crews have been dealing with a fire at a US ecology that's a hazardous materials waste facility. According to Nye County Emergency Management, the fire started about eight miles away from any populated areas. We're told because of the materials inside the waste site, the air quality is being monitored right now as a precaution and also because of rain damage to the roads. Beatty and Amargosa schools are closed for the day. Around one this morning, we also did receive a statement from the governor's office about what's happening. 
he said, quote, I have directed state agencies to mobilize resources and continue working with local authorities. Our top priority is the health and safety of Nevadans and those traveling near the incident site. Again, state personnel have also been activated. The State Emergency Operations Center in Carson City is helping coordinate with resources and updates. Now, we did try to reach out to officials in Nye County about more information, whether or not this fire is still going on or if it's contained at this time. They said that they'll be updating us with more information at about 10 a.m. and we'll be out here live all morning long until we get those updates. For now, reporting live, Michael Stevens, 8 News Now. Beatty, Nevada, AP, the latest on the fire that started at a closed radioactive waste disposal site in Nevada, all times local 11.30 a.m. Officials say a fire is out at a closed radioactive waste site in Nevada, and law enforcement and state agencies are descending on the rural area to test air quality and check for any other problems. It's still unknown how the fire started Sunday in the rural facility in Beatty, about 8 miles from populated areas. The site had accepted low-level radioactive waste for 30 years before closing in 1992. Members of the Nevada National Guard's Hazardous Detection Unit are traveling to the site from Carson City with equipment that can detect radiation levels. U.S. Ecology said no evacuations have been ordered. The fire was reported by U.S. Ecology, which now operates a neighboring facility. The site where the fire started is now under the control of the state's Department of Health and Human Services. Beatty, Nevada, AP, the latest on the fire that started at a closed radioactive waste disposal site in Nevada, all times local 11.30 a.m. Officials say a fire is out at a closed radioactive waste site in Nevada, and law enforcement and state agencies are descending on the rural area to test air quality and check for any other problems. It's still unknown how the fire started Sunday in the rural facility in Beatty, about 8 miles from populated areas. The site had accepted low-level radioactive waste for 30 years before closing in 1992. Members of the Nevada National Guard's Hazardous Detection Unit are traveling to the site from Carson City with equipment that can detect radiation levels. U.S. Ecology said no evacuations have been ordered. The fire was reported by U.S. Ecology, which now operates a neighboring facility. The site where the fire started is now under the control of the state's Department of Health and Human Services. Beatty, Nevada, AP. Japanese journalists, do they want to kill children? Adults in Tokyo are insane. Watch nursery school children on contaminated playground equipment. The radiation is in the holes. No dosimeters. You think a kid knows what a dosimeter is? Huh? Do ya? Nothing more scary than seeing a bunch of kids marching off to school with dosimeters. This can't be any worse. Imagine being the mailman and all these kids going past you with dosimeters and you're new on the job. Another prefecture got I was eating up TV, not paying attention to it. Well, well, how'd they get this job? I wonder. Well, the last guy had a heart attack.
I don't want to host this show no more. <laughs>